bones of the ashes The spirits light up the night Looking down the edge of forever So stop me and take my advice Now, from the Untold Radio Network It's Untold Radio AM With Doug and Alex Hijack Hey, hey! I see we have a member. It's been a member for four months. Congratulations! Jennifer. Thanks for stay, sticking with us, Jennifer. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. First four month membership. It's a big the first, deal. not the last. No, hopefully not. So I hear you have a new family member. A little tiny new family member. A little one. Did, did you, um, can you show us? Oh my God. <laughs> so what kind of breed is this? A British short hair. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah, royalty. <clears throat> Beautiful cat. Does it shed? No, not what? not not much. I mean, it's got, that mean? that's a short hair. It's not a long look, hair. It doesn't look short to me. <laughs> As short pretty, as you can get them. Pretty cute face. Yeah. So what are they going to look like when they get big? Like that, but... Bigger. Chubbier. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we have, a, I think, a cool show tonight. Yeah. We have... Our main guest is J Jason Offit. Yeah. Offit. Yes, yeah. I got it right. You did. And Jason authored... Um, Chasing American Monsters. And then we've got, um, before that, we're going to warm up with Todd Newby. And Todd is a Minnesota researcher who I've known for quite a few years now. Well, we got together actually even yesterday where we hung out part of the day. Got to take an e-bike ride while the summer was still here. You know, a little bit of summer. Yeah, it's nice when you can get it. Yeah, that was like... 58. 58. He didn't work. He didn't even work out. I don't know how you do that. And I'm from here. I got a hoodie and you know all this stuff. He didn't yeah. even work out. All of a sudden I looked. I'm like, Todd, you're gonna freeze. <laughs> Anyhow, he said he had fun. He can talk more about that. Um, but um, let's see what do we got here? Ah, did you see there was a report in the hill? It was just kind of shocking. I don't even know if I sent you the link, but they reported that they've got confirmation. They have 12 craft. It's conf confirmed, supposedly, by government, numerous government people. 12 of them? 12 alien, 12 alien craft, yep, all parked in a man cave. What? They're all parked in a man cave, shined up, waxed. So for the people that have heard about this at home, can you explain this a little bit? Like, I don't know. I watched an article. I, I forgot to send you the link. Do you want me to send it to you now? Yeah. Yeah. Is there? Is it just coming out there like there's not that many details? Yeah. It's a pretty cool link. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm going to send it now. I want to try. Staying on here. Should I send it? Maybe I should send it Messenger. Yeah, that'd be great. easier. Okay, all right, I'll do that. I'll try. Oh my God, a new version of Messenger is ready to install. <laughs> I'm like, really? Oh, now they want me to sign in to again. Oh, forget that. I'll do an email. You want to? Yeah, email me. It's just you can't uh, win. No, I can't. That's if I've ever me emailed you from this account. That's possible. I've never even done that. Let's look here. Yep, I've got it. Perfect. I sent it to Alex and Untold Radio, which reminds me, anybody that wants to get a hold of us, it's Alex and Untold Radio, and untoldradioam.com. Yes. Or you can just put Doug in there, Doug at untoldradioam.com. Stay on here. Oh, man. 
I'm not a big Mac fan. Me either. If this Mac blew up, I wouldn't be sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't be the end of the world. No. Staying on here. I keep hitting copy and paste on it. There we go. I'll try it again. Nope, it won't paste. I literally cannot paste anything. So it's not happening. Well, let's, uh, so yeah. It's my screw up. No, no problem. We can uh, we can talk about it next week, and there's a little bit more details. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's it's a basically a news article, um, and a video, but you can find it probably on YouTube. Okay, now I gotta get back to my notes. There we go. Okay, so anyhow, but they but they confirmed, and that's I think it's nuts. Oh, that's I mean that's incredible. It really is. It's kind of like but F12 craft is all confirmed. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know. Seems crazy. We're living in crazy times. And then I sent you a picture that represents <clears throat> something we're going to talk about very briefly. Peanuts. And the reason I'm going to bring up peanuts, because I was dumb enough to buy, I think it's, God, it's going to be a 20 pound bag of peanuts. At a hardware store. So I bought this at a hardware store. And you should never buy food at a hardware store. Ever. <laughs> never. Ever. Ever. Um, so I buy this thing. And so I've been eating a bowl every night, right? Mm -hmm. One bowl of peanuts every single night. And then I was thinking, you know that paper crap on it? That, that shell that's like paper? Yeah. I wondered, is that good for you? Probably not. Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I read there's actually a battle of scientists battling they, over peanut paper. They can't decide if it's they can't. Good or bad. One group says it's really bad for you. It it messes up with your gut biome. The other one says it really helps your gut biome, and um, it's got a bunch of tannins in it that are antioxidants that are better for you than blueberries. So I don't know. But man, I've eaten a lot of that peanut paper. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about. But isn't that the thing with hell stuff? But nobody ever thinks peanut. about peanut paper. No. Only I do. <laughs> Anyhow, so I went, well, there's got to be some interesting peanut facts, right? Yeah. There's got to be. And there were. It's amazing. So I'm going to go through some interesting peanut facts. And I'm, I'm not, I didn't say... I didn't say the other word people think I'm saying. You did. No, I said peanuts. <laughs> okay. Just in so, case the YouTube censors are. Yeah, yeah, peanuts. Listening. Okay. So apparently the ancient Aztecs started mashing up peanuts hundreds of years ago. Hundreds. To make peanut butter. Well, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they refined. In 1890, somebody figured out a way to do it better. So peanut butter was invented officially and marketed as early as 1890. 1890 became yeah. a thing. Yeah, peanut butter. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Did you know there's a word? Some people have a fear of peanut butter. I didn't know that. And you're, you're, and you're there's talking actually about a word. Some... In <laughs> Who in the world thinks of this crap? But there's a word for the fear of having peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. And the word is, it's almost like arachnophobia. It's arachna, arachna butt. Yeah, it says butt. Arachna butt, urobia, urophobia. Arachna butt, urophobia. Yeah, I can't say it. It's too long. And now it's the fear of being That's peanut butter that is so sticking weird. to the roof of your mouth. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> That's the that's your reaction. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. You're uh, you're in my peanut gallery <laughs> right now. Okay. Um oh, there's so many facts. Oh, and in, in speaking of the peanut gallery, <clears throat> comes from um, in the 1800s, people would be sitting in the upper level of the audience and they would throw peanuts at stage, you know, the, the stage actors. They would. Yeah, they would throw peanuts out if they didn't like their performance. 
they didn't like what they were seeing. So that's why they call it a peanut gallery. Oh, that's where that term comes from. Yeah. So people throwing peanuts at mm, actors. The song's yeah. literal. That's literal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, peanuts are the 18th uh, century's most valuable crop. So the U.S. exports 200,000 tons. And I personally bought 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Not not sorry I did. But you know when you get peanuts from a hardware store, they don't look like the picture. No, they don't. Half of them were broken. I have a lot of deformed peanuts in my deformed. hardware store peanuts. I have a lot with like four in, mm-hmm. a lot of singles, and a lot that are cracked open. Cracked. So they must grade them like grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. I got the crap grade. <laughs> So the they, cheap kind. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, apparently, a peanut was brought to the moon by Alan B. Shepard. Why did he bring a peanut to the moon? Was he going <clears> to <throat> eat it up there? Or? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Um, it says, apparently, you can go to Grand Saline, Texas, and there you can see the world's largest peanut butter jar. Really? Or no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm. It weighs 1,300 pounds. 1,300 pounds? Pounds. Peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. Man, now we're talking. Okay, so now I want you to guess how many peanuts could you, uh, how many peanut butter sandwiches do you could produce from one acre of peanuts? Peanut butter sandwiches. If you were growing one acre of peanuts, how many sandwiches would that produce? 10,000. Not a bad guess. 30,000. Okay. It's pretty damn good, actually. Lucky guess. Yeah. The speed record for eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is six of them in one minute. (laughs) Yeah, because it's the first one maybe goes down okay, but. Yeah, well, yeah. Ninety-four percent. Speaking of peanut butter, I need water. Ninety-four percent of U.S. homes regularly use peanut products. That's good stuff. Yeah, peanuts are grown in tropical and subtropical regions all over the world. The peanut is native to the Western Hemisphere, right? Right. But it originated in South America and spread throughout the New World as Spanish explorers discovered the versus, versatility of the peanut. Huh. So when the peanuts apparently accompany the Spaniards when they came here. Just brought peanuts. Just brought peanuts. Yeah. So how many peanuts, okay, for a, for a million dollars, how many peanuts... Does it take to make one jar of peanut butter? Normal jar. 120. 120 peanuts? That wouldn't even make a teaspoon. <laughs> what? Why does she know a lot? <laughs> 500. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Like 600. Yeah, 540. Okay. Peanuts. Okay. I just. I, I actually figured it was more than that. Yeah. What's well, like All this right. crazy of orange? So apparently, juice. you cannot call a product. Peanut butter, if it doesn't contain 90% peanuts. 90%. It goes under 90%. You can call it all sorts of things, but you cannot call it peanut butter. Hmm. Yep. And I think everybody knows peanuts are not nuts. They're in the Lagoons. pea family. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, what's another name for a peanut? Do you know? A legume? Does anybody know? No, no. The, a, a, a goofy name. John Ayers probably knows. It's yeah, another name for a peanut bo- peanut. Anybody know? Anybody know in chat? I know. I, like, it's called a goober. A goober? Yeah, that's what they call peanuts. Goobers. Why do people get called goobers? I don't know. This probably look like a peanut. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard that term. Right. For peanuts. Goobers. In in the UK they call them monkey nuts. Monkey nuts. Yep. Yep. And let's see here. Um P 
peanuts do not contain any cholesterol, and apparently they're packed with healthy fats, lots of uh, protein. I was going to say propane. (laughs) They're packed with protein. (laughs) I was thinking about me and Blaine was over earlier, your brother, and we were talking about propane tanks. Why are we going to talk about propane? It's a long story. It's a long story. Yeah. Oh, me and Blaine do his debate stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's real agreeable. Yeah. (laughs) He agrees. Well, we debate a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. um, uh, Peanuts also have shown to contain Reservatrol. Mm. It's a powerful anti-aging. That's why I'm eating so many damn peanuts, so I don't age. I didn't know that. I thought it was just in wine. That's interesting. Um, let's see here. Reese's peanut butter cups is the top selling candy bar in the U.S. Oh, did you hear recently? They found. Like, oh, I know. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I won't say. I don't want to even hear about it because guess what I was eating yesterday. No. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> well, there's more protein nah, for you. <laughs> don't even talk about it. Gross. All right, look it up, guys. If you want to know, oh, you don't probably even don't. tell them that. <laughs> It'll it's horrid. It. It's Halloween. Everybody enjoys those things. Oh, yeah, of course. Perfect timing. And how would you ever even know? Uh, this, this, this tastes I'm going to be meaty. looking, though, from now on. I'm going to break them into and look. <laughs> you don't want to look. Yeah, I do. Okay, don't. Okay, I'm don't not doing it. it. I'm not don't doing it. it. Don't Um, Let's see here. Uh, so apparently 40 days after you plant, after you plant um, peanuts, they produce yellow flowers. And then the lower portion of the plant starts producing peanuts. Forty days. Forty days. And peanuts don't need much water when you when you plant them, yeah. so they're a much easier crop to grow than like walnuts that require tons of water. Mm. Yep. Um. Let's see here. What other? I've got a lot. I don't. I don't like most of these facts. They have a lot of vitamin E and fiber. Yeah? Yeah. I need my fiber, man. All right, enough of that crap. <laughs> so how are, we, uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, I oh yeah, one more. The world's largest peanut. Guess how big? Six pounds. No. It's three <laughs> foot even... long. Three okay. foot, 18 inches long. Okay, okay. How can that be? There's no such a thing as three foot, 18 inches. That would be four foot two. <laughs> Or no, four foot, can't think. Four foot six. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Fake news. Fake news. Someone didn't do their math. All right, let's go to some, take a little break, go to Clips, get Todd on. I'm going to grab some water, and I'll see you in a second. All right. <laughs> Hangar One Publishing, books that explore the unknown. Uh, uh, they're after my story. Legends leap off the pages of our books. You think you're the only one? They're under my heels, too. From UFOs to cryptids, Bigfoot and beyond. Who's behind all this? Hangar One Publishing, where every legend is revealed. It's in the one publishing. They're unraveling all of our mysteries. Dive in. Real videos, sights, and sounds with our immersive book technology. I guess our secrets are out now. But in the best possible way. From Bigfoot tracks to galactic trails, we cover it all. We should get out of here before it's too late. You're right. Let's plan. Escaping reality. Dive into ours. Hangar One Publishing, revealing the universe's best kept secrets, one book at a time. Hello once again to everybody out there in Untold Radio Land. This is Brendan Brown, host of the fastest 30 minutes in the cryptid world, This Week in Bigfoot. Now we've been busy while we've been away putting together an even faster-paced look at the world of Bigfoot. Here's what we got coming up on the fall season premiere. 
Big Bob Hieronymus. Was he really the man in the suit that fateful autumn day? Some say yes, some say no. We'll look at the facts. Mike Lucci's got an exclusive on the Man Beast of Western New York film. Snow Walker Prime talks with Bigfoot in the season's first two minutes with, and the Bigfoot rundown makes its debut. You won't want to miss that. All this and more on the next This Week in Bigfoot on a new night Sunday at a new time 6.15 p.m. Eastern. You won't want to miss it. You better be there. Only on CARC Universal. Show your support for the Untold Radio Network family of shows and join in on the conversation by using super stickers and super chats on YouTube. Got a question you want answered? Ask it live via a super chat and get real time responses from our shows, knowledgeable hosts, and guests. Help keep the Untold Radio Network shows running strong. We need your support. Send your super chats and stickers now. Hey, Untold Radio Network fans. Want exclusive perks and to support our channel? Introducing our YouTube membership program with three amazing levels. Get loyalty badges that level up to different cryptids the longer you're a supporter. How cool is that? You'll also get access to custom Bigfoot emojis and priority in chat. Upgrade to Backstage Pass for exclusive wallpapers, photos, status updates, discounted books, and merchandise. Go all in with the producer level for everything mentioned plus member shoutouts. Ready for an enhanced experience? Join now, pick your membership level, and let's make this journey even more exciting together. Hello, everybody. Uh, I agree. Alex, you were the voice of the alien in that commercial. Yeah. W were you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> you were? Oh, my God. Everybody knew. You couldn't even hide your own voice. It just came through a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. It's a cute spot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we think it's funny. Yeah. Well, I know it's funny. It's cute. It's, it's good. It's cute. It's fun. Yeah, it is, it's, it's, it is funny. It grows on you. Yeah. All right. Clip one. Do you know what a sable is? A sable. Yeah, no, a sable. It's like a, a mink equivalent or a pine martin. We have a pine martin here in this um, in North America. Similar. Go ahead and play it. It's just really cool. A lot of people have never seen a sable. And sable means black. Clip one. Let's listen to this thing. I think they're cute almost as cute as your cat. Yeah, they look uh Is that cute. They are cute. Yeah, they have kind of a half dog, half fox, half something. But it's a member of the mink, the mink, the weasel family, believe it or the not. Weasel. Weasel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, clip two. Um, this is really interesting. Have you ever wondered what a T-Rex would really sound like? Ever. T-Rex. So Sandia Labs, based on science and all of the bones, and the, they created the T-Rex sound, recreated it. And now we're going to play it for you and hear what a real T-Rex would have sound like. I don't believe it, but perhaps you will. I don't know. It's pretty, it is interesting. Here's a team. According to a vocalization study by Sandia National Laboratories, this is what a T Rex actually sounded like. Isn't that cool? That's super weird. 
It's the most interesting clip we've ever yeah. played on a cool radio. I wonder how they put that. There's your ending. What about this next one? I don't even know if we can play this one. Oh, hang on. Clip four? Or no, we're in clip three. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of F-bombs. Can we not play F-bombs? I would. We should maybe skip this one. He was uh, pretty fired up. Well, here, I can just... Is it okay or not okay? Uh, Why don't I just mute it? Why don't you just kind of talk through what he's... I can talk through it. I can talk through it. Sure. Okay, perfect. I know what it is. I'm going to look on his face. <laughs> He's a character. Go ahead and play it. Maybe it's subtitled. Really fucking weird. Oh, well, see? Oh! Turn the sound <laughs> off. He says the F on a ton. And it's like, look, people, when you're going to tell a story, you don't need to use F bombs. No. You can say frickin' or whatever, right? Anyhow, so he gets up early in the morning, takes a walk about five thirty in the morning, and he goes and walks on the beach normally. Well, he sees this big fence that's been erected on the beach. It's like miles long. So he doesn't know what's going on, but there's like literally military there. And uh, apparently he was approached by somebody, a Marine. But he was hearing this really weird hum. There's the barrier he saw. He drew the barrier. But he was hearing this really loud hum, and the hum was hurting his ears at this point. And anyhow, to make a long story short, he sees the military dragging out this big egg-shaped object out of the ocean. And they were telling him he didn't. He wasn't authorized to be there. They needed to leave, blah, blah, blah. They were asking him, you know, interrogating him. Why are you here? But they're dragging this humming egg out of the ocean. Enough. That's it. That's the story. What about the next clip? Just move right on. Just move on. (laughs) (laughs) Just run. (laughs) Jeez. The first thing you do... Let's play the big F sound. I had it on two screens and then it was muted. Well, the next one, we don't need sound. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. but this is what happened when you, this is what's going to happen if you don't stake your tent down. Oh, geez. Yep. So if you go camping, you go big footing, stake your tent down. Even though now, now most of them are self standing, you don't need to. Yeah, that's but if you're not in it and it gets windy and get an updraft, that's what's going to happen to your tent. I see you're getting right ahead of me. Okay, clip. <laughs> it's moving along. It's moving right along. Clip five. No sound. This is a red velvet ant. Do not mess with these. And apparently the males have wings. But the females don't. Then they are just basically an ant. But I guess they pack a sting that's unbelievable. Okay, moving on based on Alex. Moving yeah. on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Apparently you're just making your own shit up here. <laughs> what are you what people are we watching stationed. now? Yes, people went along the Whoa, line. shut it off. <laughs> what are you doing? That's the next clip. I know, but I want to talk about All right, it. you gotta cue it up. So um anyhow, so this is called the slash. Have you ever heard of the slash? No. It's the demarcation line between the U.S. and Canada. Okay. They went and they cut every tree down at the border. Cut it all down. Well, yeah, yeah. It's a slash. I think it would be a great spot to do big footing. Yeah, because of the edges. Yeah, well, yeah, big time. Anyhow, you can see it from space. Go ahead and play it now. 
Sounds good. Did you know that the entirety of the U.S.-Canada border has been marked by a 20-foot-wide line of deforestation? 20-foot-wide. Yes, wide. people went along the longest wow. international border in the world and chopped down all the trees, leaving a stark line across even the most remote areas of forest. After various treaties decided on this border, a binational organization was created with the job of surveying and... All right, that's it, enough. And those boys got... We get it. I think we should walk from one end of the slash to the other. So? I wonder if anybody's done that. The whole length? Yeah, the whole way. Walk. Or do uh, a dirt yeah. bike. Yeah, I mean, it could be Then every once in a while you could kind of dart into Canada and then dart back real quick. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Clip seven. Sound is good, but could be a little shocking. This is an animal, the only animal in nature that actually uses a toilet with a flip up lid. Go ahead. A shrew is shitting. You heard it right. They are one of the few wild mammals to have a toilet. As a toilet, the pitcher plant doesn't feel aggrieved. To ensure the tree shrew can poop on their heads, it even provides tasty snacks. This liquid is secreted from its fuzzy surfaces. As it tastes a little sweet, the greedy tree shrew promptly licked three toilet lids in a roll. In exchange, <laughs> the tree shrew leaves lid. its gift behind. The pitcher plant's purpose is achieved. The nitrates in these two fecal balls are just what it needs. A storm arrives. The rain flushes the toilet clean, and the tree shrew goes home to sleep. This special animal-plant relationship also involves the bats. The pitcher plant is well aware of the bat's characteristics. Its spacious body allows the bats to easily position themselves, and to retain them, it evolved a funnel-shaped structure to let the bats hang inside comfortably. The surrounding enclosure makes the bats feel secure and cozy. If they occasionally encounter a bat with diarrhea, then this pitcher plant is incredibly lucky for this kind of feces seeking behavior okay, one enough. of their <laughs> Jeez. you get the point <laughs> you get the point yeah i'd say um clip eight sounds good this is real quick world's fastest production cars goes how fast alex what would you guess 160 miles an hour that's okay give me a break are you serious do you think that's the world's fastest well it's not fast enough no. Uh, this car we're going to show you does nearly 300 miles an what? hour. What? Yeah. But it's 1.8 million bucks to buy one. Go ahead. A little out of my budget. Yeah. It's the world's fastest road legal car, you may ask. Well, you may think it is a Bugatti or even a Lamborghini. But the fastest car ever has over double the amount of horsepower and a 5.9 liter V8 twin turbo with a seven-speed robotized manual and produces 1,750 horsepower, the SSC Tuatara, right, a car manufactured by That's SSC good. North America. They make 100 a year. You should get one, Alex. Trade that Toyota in. I know. You would only I mean, owe $1.8 million. <laughs> Pay it off in 30 yeah, years. All, all that trading value yeah, from the $40,000 a month car payment. Yep. Yeah. That's not too bad. Ridiculous. Clip nine sounds fine. I just thought this was cool because it's just a flying fox. He obviously is in a zoo, but it's just a really cool close up of his face and wings. And it's just, I don't know. I think they're an amazing animal. Go ahead and just play it. Sounds fine. <laughs> That's one big bat, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. 10 is another clip with um it's got cool sound in it this just shows the effects of infrasound on water as many know alligators produce infrasound and this isn't a big alligator go ahead and play it sound on <laughs> That's it. Small gator, big voice. All right. Should we get Todd and Jason? Yeah, on? let's get Todd on. There he is. Hey, Todd. Oh, gosh. He doesn't even hear Hi, guys. Me. Hey, can you hear us, Todd? How's it going? I can hear you. 
Oh, okay. Your lips yeah, don't match your your somebody's got a delay big time, but whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Maybe it'll catch up. What do you think, Alex? Did it do that when you did a test today? No, no. We were we were good. What Early. the heck is going on around here? So anyhow. So um, how'd you like riding e bikes yesterday, Todd? Check check for black helicopter. <laughs> Well, it was fantastic, but you took me on a 30 mile ride and I'm wiped out today. So, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so no, really, what'd you think? You were on a fat, you were on not only the first time on a, on a fat bike, fat tire bike, but first time on an electric bike. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And it was like I, I told you at the time, it felt like cheating. But then you told me to turn the turn the motor off, and then it would be real work. And so yeah. I didn't do that. I I was just enjoying the ride. It was a beautiful day. Yeah, it was nice. Um, I'm wondering if Todd like hung up and then just got back on. We get rid of that delay. Yeah, it's quite yeah, bad. We could, uh, why don't you give that a shot? Todd, we have almost a out? twenty second delay, Todd, for some weird reason. So why don't you just click? Oh, close, no um, close it, and then just re-enter again like you did the first time. Okay. It's going to be a 20-second delay when he turns it off. <laughs> and then uh, what did you want to get Jason on? Um, soon. Very soon. A few minutes. Let's get kind of Todd introduced, and Todd's going to join the conversation. Perfect. Todd um, actually is responsible, Alex, for adding a whole new category into Legend Meat Science, too. Another one. And that's bone breaks. Bone breaks. Bone breaks, yep. Because do you remember we had, um, I believe it was Jason B. Smith on the other day. Yep. And Jason mentioned radial bone breaks that he would find because he knew that they were radial bone breaks because he's a medic, but he would find those those sticks in. So, Todd, do we have a delay? Talk. Testing. Are we? Are uh, we still have the delay? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I can hear you. Yeah. No. Well, we'll just deal with it. In fact, if you want, well, you can just shut your camera off. Right that way. Yeah, you can always just shut your camera off, and then we won't have to worry about the delay. There, so we can hear you, right? How's that? Hello? You can hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. It's just hard to deal with that delay. I think we still have the delay. Yeah, it's still yeah, there. Because... That's weird. It's let me, weird. Try, yeah, let me try my have... phone. Let me try it that way. Okay, well, just hang up and call back with your phone. Yeah, just, Todd, keep your volume as okay. low as possible so we don't get an echo yep. on your end. Okay. We should be fine. See you in a, Anyhow, little, in a bit here. So Todd has found numerous radial bone breaks. I, I was like a light bulb went off when I saw the photos because I'd heard about this before from other people. You know, I'd seen similar breaks, but they didn't know they were spiral breaks. Mm. So I asked Esteban Sarmiento uh, during an interview. We interviewed him for LMS, too. And um, he said, it's not possible. There's no way a Bigfoot would have the strength to do it. And I'm like, I tend to disagree. <laughs> you know, but he just didn't think any animal on Earth would have the power to hold two ends of a bone and twist it and break it. Todd. Hey. Can you hear any better? Any better? Perfect. No delay. Okay. Yeah, you must. You must. You know, for a for a technical guy, Todd, <laughs> Todd does computers for a living. To see y'all know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, software. Wrong. Wrong. Software. Software. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyhow. Okay. Well, we we we've satisfied that uh, issue. So. Well, good. So, anyhow, let's talk. Go jump right into this um, bone breaks. Sure. So, do you want to talk? Just tell us what you know. Okay. 
So I, I can't take full credit for this because the the folks that I was with and the team that I'm on with regard to the the group, we found a a broken back legs of a uh, of a deer. Both both back legs were broken, and so we took pictures of them, and it was really interesting this has been way way deep in the forest probably three miles from the closest road so it wasn't anywhere near a road or anything like that so it wasn't a, a deer got hit by a car or, or anything along those lines so i showed the pictures to the the team and they came back with you know these are um spiral fractures and i didn't know what a spiral fracture was and so i looked it up and found a chart that had a, all these different types of bone breaks and fractures and green tree breaks and so forth and looked up what a spiral fracture looked like and then uh, looked at the pictures themselves and it was absolutely a, a spiral fracture right. now what was unique about a spiral fracture, and this is what was pointed out, is that in order to be able to create that spiral, you need to have torque, meaning that you have to be able to twist that particular bone in order to get that type of a break. And so when you start thinking about that twisting motion and or that torque, you need a thumb in order to hold on to it and twist it like that. And so when you start thinking about, okay, what has a thumb that can prove, uh, provide this torque motion on these, on both back legs to create this spiral fracture. And so that's always been that. And we found those back in 2012 and I've had pictures of those and I've always thought that they were just fantastic. And, Recently, up at another location, found another set of, of uh, spiral uh, bone spiral fractures on them as well. Took pictures of those. Didn't keep them because it was like I didn't think that I needed to at the time. Yeah. So, I don't know, Doug, if you wanted to show those pictures or if you um, had those or not. <laughs> I screwed up, Alex. I didn't send those to you either. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, we can show them another um, time. But well, um, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll we're going to get you back. Okay. Um, but basically, if you took a bone and you cut it at an angle, a leg bone, that's mm -hmm. kind of what it looks like, correct? Right. Right. It it's got a a a <clears throat> unique pattern to it where the bone fractures when it, uh, it experiences the torque, yeah. and it, it fractures in a specific way. So if, if you if you break it like over your knee, that's called a green tree. Or it looks like a green tree branch and it shatters and, and so forth. But this actually snaps and breaks off the bone uh, from itself. And so mm. it's it's quite unique. And, and so that that aspect of it where it requires the thumb to do that is I think is is some of the best circumstantial evidence for squatches, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think it's been kind of universally known that um, Bigfoots may catch deer by breaking their back legs. Mm -hmm. It's kind of known. Yeah. It wasn't yeah it, Matt, I think it was Matt Moneymaker that maybe had first put that out into the public. Maybe. I believe it was. Uh, I, I heard it from... My internal group, uh, either Andy or Chris, I believe it was that um, I, I heard it from. So uh, they were the ones that that brought me into it. And it's like, oh, that's that's very interesting. So, so um, Charlotte is asking, is it is a green stick fracture? I don't know what that means. Well, a, a green stick fracture would look like a green tree branch in okay. which you snap it and it has um fibers, fibers. yeah it's it's kind of like this like this where it's kind of like that so oh in, in in the uh in the pictures that i was looking at there's there's a specific look so 
You know, Alex, well, you want me well, to send those pictures to you right now? I think sure, I if you can. Yeah. Sure. And, and, then, and also, I want to talk. Um, this is a call to action. Anybody who hears it tonight, anybody who hears it anytime, we are looking for some bones with a spiral fracture that we can have examined by orthopedic surgeons, by experts to determine, um, you know, what, what, what caused the break. And also, we are going to need some deer leg bones to do a torque test to see how many pounds of torque it actually takes to produce a spiral fracture for legumine signs too. So thanks, Todd, for adding a whole new category. Did Todd freeze up? I think he did, yeah. I'm telling you, there's something going on. We went on blink him over here today to do a speed test because we've been having speed tests. The speed test is literally off the charts. It's so good. I have the best of the best internet. Yeah. But during the show, it's like somebody, like I said, it's like somebody's throttling back my internet. It's really weird. It's kind of creepy. Doesn't happen it, except, you know, when we're doing the show. It's been good tonight. But it's kind of weird. You know why it's Todd good? No, he's bad. His connection. I don't know. So bizarre. He's trying to connect, uh, but... Uh, but what? No, it's not working. What does that mean? How do you know? His device is not connected, but I see his Maybe little it's... icon at the bottom. Oh. <clears throat> so we might well, just let's have go, to have well, him Let's go ahead and bring... Um, Jason up. Let's bring Jason up, and then um, when Todd gets in, he can help him. Well, we can talk more about this. I'd like to run some of this by Jason. Okay, cool. There he is. Hey, how, Jason. How do you do? Hey. No. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> oh, Sorry one. about that. I couldn't that help myself. That was a really good one, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> You're already on my shit list. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Might as well be on yours, too. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know how that goes. I have days like that, too. Anyhow, it's really good to meet you. Um, I have not had time to read your book. Do you have a copy in your hand, Alex? Can you put up a, a link? I'm standing up right now because I should have had this in my hand already. Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh, Chasing perfect. American Monsters. Yeah, it's so cool. I love the I love the vintage look on the cover. It's cool. Yeah, so do I. They did a great job on the vintage cover. It looks how many beautiful. pages? How many pages is it? A lot. A lot. It's good enough. Uh, That's yeah, like an Alex. The, answer. Uh, counting the uh, <laughs> counting the index, we've got three hundred and sixty-seven. That's an Alex answer. Just That's a lot. Fun. That's a thick book. Well, and I'm also working right now on uh, chasing North American monsters, where I'm going from Canada all the way down to Panama. Oh, okay. Very cool. So how in the world did you get interested? Are you doing research? Like, are you doing um, mainly historic research? Do you ever get out in the field? Well, I haven't been out in the field in, in, in a while. Uh, I do mainly historic research. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I've been interested in this since I was a kid. Uh, back in the early 1970s, uh, I was really big into into reading newspapers, even even when I was small. And there were all sorts of stories. Okay, you guys disappeared for a second. There are all sorts of stories um, about a Bigfoot being seen in Louisiana, Missouri. Uh, on the opposite side of my the state where I live, Missouri. And uh, I was following that because it was in the newspaper. My gosh, this has got to be true. They're covering Bigfoot. And um, yeah, that that really got me interested in in the realization that monsters might actually exist. So I've, I've read as much as I can. And, I, and I've interviewed a, num a number of people who've seen all sorts of monsters and uh, uh, I am convinced there's something out there or a lot of things out there we really don't know about. I can't hear a word you're saying, Doug, because you're oh, muted. Oh, sorry, sorry. There we go. <laughs> no, I was muted. Um, <laughs> have you seen anything ever in the way of monsters? Uh, or have you, it, have you seen I, any personal evidence, like somebody casted a footprint and brought it to you? I mean, <clears throat> 
what in the world convinces you these things are real? Well, when it comes to, to Bigfoot especially, and if there's any monster out there that's going to be real, in, in, in my opinion, it's, it's Bigfoot because there's enough evidence out there. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with the, with the, the plaster casts and, and not just the cast. I mean, the, the footprints could be faked, but the dermal ridge have, have, have looked at and said, this is from some kind of primate. I don't know what kind it is, yeah. you know, from, from that to, um, you know, all sorts of, of, of hair, DNA samples, all of the, um, all of the sightings from from people in 49 of 50 states in, in in the U.S. have have seen Bigfoot. I mean, if we were having a murder trial just on this evidence, somebody would get put away for life. And and here here when it comes to Bigfoot, you know it it, it it's not enough. And and I I totally understand that because I I teach at a university and a couple of my friends here are scientists and. And although they're big into the paranormal, they're like, man, we got to have evidence. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to take a take a body to to finally convince the world that Bigfoot exists. Yeah. But uh, uh, for me, it's it's already there. Well, <clears throat> what type of can you go and kind of go through a list of the type of cryptids that you write about, and which which story really was compelling? And which historical event that really, really got you thinking? Oh my gosh. Uh, from, yeah, this is uh, from, from my book. It, it's all, all across uh, the United States. And, and uh, you know, I've covered a lot of Bigfoot encounters, uh, large snakes, giant snake encounters, lizard men. There've been, been in more of those than I'd really like to think about. Um, you know, Goat squatch, bat squatch, all of these different type of, of, of entities. But but the ones that I think that really hit me are uh, Thunderbirds, for one. Yeah. And there, there are a couple. Because the Thunderbird, uh, the description of a Thunderbird is a lot like a um, Teratorn from, from the Pleistocene, which was... You know, condors are big birds. They're huge vultures, and 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 um, the the teratorns are are basically condors the size of small airplanes, and, and those things have been sighted across the United States for um, you know for for centuries, and and you know the Native Americans have seen that you know saw them for 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 centuries, and then uh, then when the Europeans settled the U.S., they reported them as well. There was about uh, 20, 25 years ago, a pilot in Alaska was flying his his plane and and uh, saw a bird that was the size of his airplane. Yeah, uh, flying. I covered I covered that one in Monster Quest. We, yeah, I, I mean that's. It. But yeah, it's it's amazing, and you would think a pilot would know what he's talking about. And see, this is this would take us to UFOs because it, it's the same thing. Whenever we have pilots talking about ufo sightings i mean that's their job to be in the air yeah. they've been in the air more than the rest of us they they know what they're looking at and if they see something they can't explain that holds a whole lot of weight with me yeah yeah um so did you did you interview people for your book or is it just all historical accounts it's a mixture of both oh it is a mixture okay. of both and and um you know, one one of the things I didn't get to because I went off on on Teratorns, um, the the thing I think that really really hit me and stuck with me uh, were, were the stories of little people, because stories of little people are all over the planet. Yeah, uh, there were I mean, in in Europe, you know, you got your elves, you know, fairies, brownies, sprites, leprechauns, tom tars, trolls, kobolds, goblins. But those those are European stories. We have the same stories over here in the United States with the same type of creature. Um, the uh, Osage Indians uh, hit, that were here in uh, in Missouri, where where I'm from, had you know stories of these same type of little people. Uh, they didn't they didn't like whistling outside. They would tell, they would warn people not to whistle outside. And that same sort of warning is, is worldwide because 
the little people will hear that and they don't they don't like it in um you know, on, on the East Coast, there are lots of stories. What are, okay, well, let's back the truck up. What are little okay, people? Yeah. What are little people, Jason? Well, the, the, I've always been confused. I hear little people all the time. What are they? Well, little people are, uh, uh, we would call them paranormal entities. They're, okay. they're natural, natural, probably more natural right. than we are in entities that are between, um, I mean, the, 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 it, it really varies, but they're, they're up to three foot tall. Are they hairy? Are they? No, they're generally not hairy. They're like little people. They have larger noses. Uh, they have larger ears, you know, that, than, than, than humans do. Um, and they do have some magic. They can start fires whenever they want to. They can turn invisible whenever they want to. And they tend to uh, protect the outdoors. If you are polite, if you are respectful for, for, for nature, they tend to leave you alone. Or sometimes they can do you favors. If you're kind of a jerk out there in the forest, however... Uh, they've been known to, I mean, and this, again, is worldwide, have been known to lead people off cliffs. They will, you know, tease you and call your name and, and trick you to go deeper in the forest when you're lost, and then they will abandon you there. Uh, they have, um, they either have poison arrows or, or, or magic arrows that, that will put people to sleep. If they feed somebody uh, food, that person will be taken to, to a different realm. They'll wake up somewhere else. And that goes with fairy lore in, in Europe uh, as well. So it's just, it's fascinating to me that the same stories of little people in the U.S. are also in, in Europe, all across Asia, South America, Africa, uh, Australia. They're, they're all over the place. The same as Bigfoot. Those stories are everywhere. Lake monster yeah. stories are everywhere. Mm. Dragon stories are everywhere. Ghost stories. I mean, so something I know, but, has to be true. But yes, but are little people then the elves and the yeah, trolls? That, and it's, it's all well, the same it, thing. It depends on who you're talking about. To, to me, they seem like all the same. The same yeah. thing. Uh, you, you talk to somebody who only uh, uh, only focuses on on UFOs and and their extraterrestrials, and and there there's some truth to that because some of the ways that uh, extraterrestrials have behaved. Uh, you know, during abductions are very similar to what, yeah. what has happened with little people. So you think there's more of a correlation with aliens than there is? Do you think they're aliens? I mean. Oh, no, I don't. But oh, I mean, okay. I'm saying that there are the, the people that, that that is their worldview is okay. that there are aliens. Uh, but the rest of the because when you get to people uh, who, who are focused on on extraterrestrials or they're focused on Bigfoot or they're focused on ghosts, uh, they fit everything into into yeah. their vision. So, um, you know, they they tend to behave the same. So yeah. so some of the stories, you know, cross over. But but I really think that that the uh, the paranormal or, or supernatural little people stories from around the world. Uh, are something entirely different. Yeah, well, I know the First Nations people talking about them. Todd, have you ever ran into anybody that's mentioned a sighting or knew somebody that's had a sighting of little little people in Minnesota? Um, not that I recall, but I, I do know of uh, a location in which uh, somebody has brought in somebody to kind of assess the location and said that they are uh, that they have elementals in their in the location and so forth. Um, but I, I have not spoken to anybody that's actually had a, a, a sighting of something along those lines. Well, I I have I, I interviewed uh, a woman from um, a small town in in Northern California. And uh, she told me about this gnome sighting, and it was a typical gnome. It was about two feet tall. It had a pointed cap. It was wearing a gold tunic, had a long beard, hmm. and uh, it was laughing at her when, when she stopped her car at, at the house. She brought home groceries, her and her seven-year-old, and she heard a laugh, and she looked over, and there was this gnome with pointed teeth. Uh, laughing maniacally and, and she, she grabbed her son left the groceries out there and ran into the house and and she had a lot of 
strange encounters at, at the house she was renting. And she eventually, they got so strange that she left. Uh, and I, I also was was contacted by somebody who who read my story that, that I'd written. And she said, the same thing happened to me. And she, she talked to me about her story. And she described the house. She described where the house was. And she described what happened to her, which was this gnome-like entity that was terrorizing her house. It, it was killing pets like it did with the first person. And it was stalking stalking the house. Um, she even had, had an instance to where she, it was outside and it was screaming and running around the house. Oh. And she realized all of a sudden, oh my gosh, the dog door in the kitchen's open. And, and she ran into the kitchen just as this thing was starting to push push open the dog door and and she slid across the floor and kicked the dog door uh like a total action hero and and uh and the thing fell outside and, and and she was able to lock lock the door but um these are two cases of two different people who didn't know each other i i put them in contact with each other and and they shared stories but they both had stories of what would be uh, a Slavic gnome. Yeah. Yeah. If I saw some little dude running around in the forest with a tunic, I don't think I'd ever go in the woods again. <laughs> why well, is but you know what? You know, I think tunics would be comfortable to wear, honestly. <laughs> but why is it that little things are creepier than big things? I, you know, I, I was just, I was interviewed this morning uh, because I teach a class on, uh, I, I teach at a university and I teach a class. Yeah. Uh, a, a movie class, and and I I'm doing horror this semester, okay. and and that's what the person uh, the 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 radio host asked me about horror movies is what is the scariest thing, and my answer was small people or children. Yeah, those are the scariest because they shouldn't be scary. Children shouldn't be scary. So anything the size the size of a child that is evil, I mean that hit you i mean being a parent that really hits me in a bad yeah. place yeah it's, it's it's just kind of weird so let's let's um get away from little people and get into bigfoot um what's the most compelling bigfoot story that you've ever heard that really maybe even affected you because you talked to a witness or well, when I was in college, I was uh, going to go. I was at the grocery store, and I and I was walking through the checkout line, and I saw a National Enquirer, and the headline said Bigfoot adopts human child, and I'm like, Bigfoot's good people. That that affected me, you know, deep. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Um, I, I think most of the people I've interviewed only have encountered encountered Bigfoot. And I did this because, I, in fact, I, I think an encounter is a more personal thing. But most of the people that I've interviewed have only seen them, you know, going across the road as they're driving home at night or or something of that nature. So it's not really an encounter. It's more of a sighting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the people I've, I've, I've interviewed, I mean, it really hasn't. I, I will take that back. There was one, uh, Randy Harrington's the man's name. He's, he's a Bigfoot um, investigator from Kansas. I haven't talked to him in probably 15 years. So I hope he's out there and doing fine, Randy. Um, but he was in, in, uh, a state park in Oklahoma and there, cause there were a lot of Bigfoot, uh, Bigfoot sightings and he, he wanted to go check it out. And he put fruit out on a picnic table and he set up a tent and then he hid in his truck he, he put blankets over the windows and he had a little, little slit to where he could look out. Okay. And uh, he, he witnessed uh, Bigfoot eating the, uh, eating the fruit. Well, let me take a step backward. He fell asleep because it was late at night and he felt the truck starting to move. And a Bigfoot, he said, had climbed in the back of the, the bed of the pickup and that shaking woke him up. But he, looked out through the, the his little peak hole and, and saw Bigfoot eating fruit and handing, you know, one of the adults handing, you know, an apple to a child. And, and uh, you know, that it's, again, a story. 
I, I have no evidence. He didn't take it. He, he has no evidence other than, than what he said. But uh, I, I did like that story because it showed, you know, some caring and intelligence on, on the animals, uh, on the animals part. Yeah. Um, um, the, but there's so many of these stories. They're just so common. Todd, me and Todd were talking yesterday about, you know, uh, how do you believe somebody? You know, what are the signs of lying? But generally, why would somebody make up a story about seeing some creature? You know, it's just, I, I personally don't see any advantage to it. Well, Jim, I've run into a lot of people. I've interviewed quite a few people who are absolutely, I'm convinced, full of garbage. Um, they're the people who tell me a story one day that they've had a Bigfoot encounter. And another day, they saw a ghost in their house. And then another day, they've been abducted by aliens. And then the fourth day, wow, you know what? I gave JFK a you know a back rub this morning. Yeah. You know, the, the, those people are wanting attention. And they won't make up any story to get attention. But it's it's the people. And these are most of the people that I've interviewed. They don't want their name mentioned. The people who are not looking yeah, for they don't want attention, the attention, they don't. Right. They don't want people to know who they are. I, I will believe them more than than the people who do want their names out. So they want to right. remain anonymous. Is right. That, and in, in my I mean, I know who they are because they tell me yeah. who they are. I interview yeah. them, but they're like, I'd, I'd rather you not not mention my name because, you know, you know, people will make fun of me. But this really did happen. Uh, I, I was a print journalist for 17 years. I interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and I think I've got a pretty pretty good BS detector, and I hope so because I've got teenagers. Uh, so I think <laughs> it's been honed. Lot, yeah, it has. So you know, uh, there are a lot of people I do believe because of that, and and there are others that I definitely don't. So what do you think Bigfoot is? I'm curious. Well, well one, I want to hear from Todd too, and what you think Bigfoot is, Todd. We okay. never discussed that. All right, for me, uh, yeah, that's a. I know now is is the time that people are saying Bigfoot can't be a flesh and blood primate. There's just no way uh, it disappears in the forest. You know, we 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 can't see it anymore. Um, it, it's got to be you know, extra dimensional, or it's it's got to be you know from from a, a UFO or someplace else. Um, I'm not going to discount any of that at all, but. I really want to prove that it's not flesh and blood before I, my, my opinion is, is swayed away from that. Yeah. Uh, so in my opinion, it is a flesh and blood animal. I, I think it's, uh, I think it's intelligent. Um, I think there are different species that are very similar because there are a lot of encounters in the U S and, and worldwide that they are ape like. You know, their faces like a gorilla. Then there are a lot of other encounters to where their face is human. Yeah. So human, in fact, that, that a hunter who's got them in a scope isn't going to shoot at them because they don't want to get tried for murder. Um, there there are, are Native American or First Nations people who have a long history with these giant men. They're, they're not animals to them. They're a giant, they're giant men. And, and given a lot of, of, of DNA, um, um, you know, analysis that's been done, I, I know there's a, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but a Bigfoot researcher in Alberta, Canada, who, who had some DNA samples that uh, turned to be, you know, unknown, but slightly human. There's something human in it. Uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and, and I can't remember... The name of the woman he, that he's worked with, but but their DNA samples showed to be a primate, but it had human elements. And uh, yeah. Zena, the mm -hmm. the Alma from Russia, her son uh, was uh, unearthed, and they did a DNA test on on him as as well, and he turned out to be inconclusive, but there were human elements in there. So I'm the one uh, that did the test. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so, it was me. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that 
a lot of you know maybe one of these species of bigfoot yeah. dear lord it's our cousins yeah so what do you think todd and we never asked i never even i've never asked you that what do you think they are well i think they're absolutely flesh and blood and they are you know creatures here on earth in in the the you know, jason said you know, next step over to you know the the paranormal i i i've not gone down that road just because there isn't anything else that we have ever experienced that has that ability and then to sit there and think that but sasquatch does and nothing else and it's only sasquatch that has that capability um is a little far-fetched for me now with regard to is it a, is it a human is it an ape um I don't know. And, and looking back at from the like the the fossils that are out there with regard to Gigantopithecus um, that are legitimate and the, the teeth that they found in China and so forth, um, I, I think that is a a viable uh, route to be looking at with regard to what these things ultimately are, whether they're you know in between the uh, you know between us and the chimpanzee which is our closest relative are they actually in between that and even closer to us you know from a from a dna comparison standpoint who knows and and that's going to be up to to the science and the geneticists to be able to ultimately figure that out but i think that they're absolutely in that ballpark that's for sure All right you know i'm i'm yeah todd i exactly uh, when 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 you'd mentioned uh, something that that I talked about about I, I think you were you referring to them disappearing in the forest, right? Okay, right. And here's something that bothers me when when people are saying that an animal that big or a creature that big disappearing in the forest, they had to have gone to another dimension. Well, I'm not going there because I spent a lot. I've spent growing up a lot of time in the woods, and there have been moments where I was walking through the woods and all of a sudden five feet from me a deer sprang up and ran away I had no idea that deer was there and we're talking in animals you know, at least 150 pounds or or something around that and and if they can hide five feet away from me and if if Bigfoot is as smart as they I think they are uh them disappearing in the forest has got to be easy yeah it's just part of their nature is that they've they've adapted themselves with regard to their environment so well that they know what ultimately needs to be done in order to not be seen and they can blend in and, and with their their coat and so forth they're not disappearing they're just becoming camouflaged within the, the, the their environment in which they're not being able to be seen by us uh, it doesn't mean that they've gone off into a different portal, something along those lines. Right. And, and again, I'm not saying that they don't. I'm not discounting anything. But but uh, again, first and foremost, I, I think they're flesh and blood. And, and it proved, you know, prove me wrong. I don't know any more than anybody else does other than, you know, I've, I've interviewed more people. <clears throat> How many people do you think you've interviewed by now? Jason, gosh, Lots you know of... when it when it comes to all aspects of of the unknown, it's it's been I don't know a couple thousand probably. I've been at this for a while. Couple Did... thousand, yeah, it's a lot. I, I mean, a I, lot of man, I've done I've done five books on on different paranormal topics, and and before that, I wrote a uh, uh, a paranormal newspaper column mm. for five years, and. Uh, it was weekly, and I, I've talked to a lot of people who've encountered a, a lot of cryptids, ghosts, uh, you know, they've seen UFOs, you know, demonic possession, all all the all the things, uh, time travel even. So, Jason, um, out of all the people you've interviewed, what percentage does your BS detector go off, and what percentage do you feel like there's really something there, and what percentage are you kind of, you know, you just don't know? You know, the... I'm going to give 25%. My BS detector says that these people are, are full of, full of baloney. Um, the ones I don't know about, I mean, man, that's probably another 25%. Um, 
the 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 ones that I, I mean it might be close to 50 the ones I think are telling me the truth because those are the ones that are timid about it they don't necessarily want to make a big name for themselves they just they've had something they've had something happen to them and 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 it's burning and they want to get it out and they know that I'm not going to make fun of them I've written about it enough to know that they know that I'm, I'm not going to make fun of them so they tell me their story. And, and again, it goes back to why would they be lying if their name's not even attached to it? How hard is it to, to win these people's trust to where they're willing to tell you the full story? I started writing about paranormal topics in the mid uh, first decade of the 2000s. And at that point, it was it was hard um, because all, all the ghost shows and, and the and the paranormal shows and, and the monster shows hadn't really, um, you know, flooded the market. Uh, and I'm glad they have <laughs> because they're fun and I've been on a few, but um, er, early on the people were still really afraid of being made fun of uh, the past 10 years, I think have, have been terrific because uh, people aren't that worried about being made fun of anymore because it is so now common uh, for, for the subject of I saw a ghost or I saw a Bigfoot or I saw a UFO, uh, you know, in, in, in the media or just, you know, friendly conversation. It's so common now that, that people are a lot more relaxed. Yeah. Todd, what do you find? Have you found it has gotten better? Because you've been researching a long time. Or are people still in Minnesota really shy? About yeah. Well, coming forward. Yeah, I, I think I've experienced a lot of the same type of things that Jason does when with regard to speaking with people, I, I've, I've noticed that the um, the interest in Bigfoot, you know, kind of peaked at the time that finding Bigfoot was at its peak also. And you know, at the time, there's, you know, everybody was out doing hollers and yells and wood knocks and fun stuff like that. And that, that has waned, uh, which is fine. Um, the, the, the folks that are still interested in it, are still interested in coming out and, and doing the research and that the, the sideline folks are, have kind of moved on to something else, which is, you know, fine. But from a, from a discussing it with individual standpoint, same type of thing that they don't want, they're not looking for any accolades. They're not looking for, a lot of the times they're looking for answers. They're looking right. for what, what did I really see? What did I, you know, a, almost a confirmation as to, okay, did I really see this? And on on more than one occasion, it's it's uh, they're they're also scared and, and want to know what they if they have anything that they can particularly do with regard to not wanting to encounter these things going forward. And and they want some advice and they want some reassurances. And so we we have a lot of conversations with those individuals as well that they're just looking for somebody to talk to and and like jason said not laugh at them yeah. have an empathetic ear towards what they've experienced and and hopefully you know give them uh, some assurances have you run into people jason where it's a homeowner who has you know suddenly some kind of weird activity and you know outside their home their home getting smacked or rocks being thrown at them or or is that not common where, you know, in your investigations? Well, I no, I haven't talked to many people. Actually, no, I haven't talked to any people who've had that, uh, had that come across. I mean, those, those are common in, in the, uh, you know, the historical ones like, uh, you know, the, the Boggy Creek, you know, yeah. that, that sort of thing happened there. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but, but I haven't gotten a lot of that. I, I've, I've read quite a few stories and this is one of my pet peeves. It really drives me crazy when, whenever somebody has that happen on a consistent basis. You know, every night I have Bigfoot slapping the side of my house or I leave food out for Bigfoot and I will sit there on the porch and watch them, you know, feed their children with, with all the fruit I left out for them. And, and that bugs me because do you have video? <laughs> and if not, why not? And, you know, why haven't you called the game warden to come and sit on your porch and watch this happen? Why, why haven't you called a TV show to come and record all this? If it happens, if it happens every night. So, 
um, no, most most of the people that I've interviewed, they're they're chance encounters, which which I think are are the most common. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's tough because yeah, there's many of these habituation cases um, where there's no proof, you know, or very little. But there's also some pretty compelling homestead activities that I've investigated that suddenly started they don't even they won't even let you go out there and do any you know research they just they just want it to go away you know right um well so and and i also said you know with, with when it comes to evidence i said video i i don't trust that i don't trust uh video evidence i don't, I don't trust photo just still photographic yeah. evidence because i mean past a certain point because it can be, I can do some great things with, with Photoshop and I'm terrible <laughs> at Photoshop. So the people who yeah. really know how to use these, these, these still photography and, and, and video programs can make all sorts of things happen that yeah. look real. Um, I mean, I, I believe uh, some of the UFO photos from, you know, back in the forties and fifties, uh, the Patterson Gimlin film, you know, I'm still on the, on the, fence about that but uh i don't think it's not real um because you know back at that time they didn't have the type of manipulation that we have now right yeah they didn't have um you know artificial breasts that would jiggle or they didn't even have stretch fabric didn't even exist well when it comes to the 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 female aspect of of patty it's why would they have thought of that? Would yeah. you have thought of that? I wouldn't have thought of that. I no. would have put a male Bigfoot out there. You wouldn't need to. You yeah. wouldn't need to in that day. In that day, you wouldn't have. So that that's one of the things that really has me leaning toward that being a real, real, real video. Yeah. No, I think it is. I mean, when you take all of the muscle groups that can be observed contracting and right. expanding and all of the, you know, the thigh jiggle and the weight and, yeah, it's just... Yeah, the best thing that we had at that point was the makeup from Planet of the Apes from 1968. Yeah. And it looked great, but you didn't have the... Those costumes know, were stiff it, as a board. It, they were stiff as a board, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, also, the, the Planet of the Apes, if you noticed, no body. It's all just neck up. Right. And there, they didn't have anything that could conform to the body. And so that's why they only, they're all wearing clothes in the Planet yeah. of the Apes because yeah, they, couldn't, they couldn't figure out how to, how to make a realistic body yeah. suit. Uh, yeah. And so, but yeah, Patty looks realistic. Absolutely. Right. That's a great point. Yeah. There's that, there's that thing, you know, where you have that three second rule. You know, that recent Colorado footage and everybody was kind of going crazy. I looked at that and went, what? That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> My quick. son. My son sent that to me, and within, like you said, within about three seconds, I knew that that was garbage. Yeah, well, the first thing I noticed is bell-bottom legs. Yeah. <laughs> They're used to cover shoes. Wow. Well, that's already got enough red legs to throw it out the window. Oh, it's a tourist train. Oh, okay. You know, there you yeah, go. Yeah, and the habitat is just it wasn't yeah. right either. I mean, no. squashes don't just hang out in, in that type brush. of location. So oh, it was like sage. At brush. least not during the day. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of sad. But yeah, it just keeps happening and the press uh, kind of glams onto those. And that's what that's one of the problems that drives me absolutely insane because I, I was a journalist for 17 years. For the past 19 years, I've, I've taught journalism at a university, and I even taught a uh, taught a class called paranormal journalism, mm -hmm. which was to uh, you know to to teach the the students not to make fun of people who are you know reporting a Bigfoot encounter or a ghost sighting or, right. or you know they saw a UFO I wanted them to, to learn how to cover that thing seriously and and it's the people who who the pranksters uh, like the the Bigfoot in the freezer things of things of that nature uh, it just it ruins it for everybody because when it comes out to be a, you know a hoax um, like like balloon balloon boy I think in Colorado a few years ago Um <laughs> I mean that, that that makes everything look bad, and people start to discount the real sightings, and 
yeah, that that makes me nuts. Yeah, um, I just wish the hoaxing would end. I do. So, um, Todd, do you have any questions for Jason? Uh, no, that's... Let me let me let me ponder it for a second there. I, I probably something. can come up with a couple of them because I'm interested in his work, and that's for sure. So, so Jason, you said that you've written what five books about this subject? What are those five? Well, I, I've written five books about the paranormal. Uh, okay. Some of them are ghosts. Haunted Missouri is a ghost book. Uh, mm. uh, Darkness Walk the sh walks the shadow people among us, or about the shadow people phenomena. I've uh, uh, written a couple of books. Um, um, you know, one of them is uh, What Lurks Beyond, that uh, I took every paranormal thing I could find within a 100-mile radius of my house and and collected enough information, interviewed enough people to make a whole book out of it. And there were a lot of stories I left out because, you know, they were just common ghost stories and, and things of that nature. Um, paranormal Missouri. Show Me Your Monsters is another one. In, in those last two, I, I cover a lot of different topics uh, from, from ghosts to demonic possession to Bigfoot encounters to, to, to time travel. Um, so it's not just not just chasing American monsters. I, I've covered about everything. How do you find individuals or do they find you? There have been there have been both. Um because I had a newspaper column that was in a few different papers for a while, uh, a lot of people were like, hey, this guy gets it. This guy's not making fun of the people he's writing about. So I want to tell my story to him. So I, I had people um, I, I had people contact me, uh, but I had also had a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people I, I contacted myself. Uh, there, there's a town close to me called Skidmore. A lot of really creepy things have happened there, but back in 1980, something fell from the sky and landed it there, struck a soybean field. And I hunted down through old newspaper articles, the, the people who were involved with, with um, you know, investigating it. So it, it's it's been part people coming to me, which is easy for me, and then me doing a lot of research and hunting people down, which is kind of difficult, but more rewarding. So let's um, talk about some of the fringe cryptids. Um, Mothman's a real interesting one because that one gets fueled on a pretty regular basis. And I always find that as a, you know, a, certainly a sign it's not, it, that it is real. People are really seeing it. Um, so Mothman and Dogman are seen on a very regular basis. If something's fueled like that, like there's all these current sightings that Lon Strickler is investigating in Chicago area near the O'Hare airport. And man, I'm telling you, I've been reading those and there's some very, very compelling witnesses that have seen these things. Right. Lon's done. Lon's a great guy. Lon's yeah. done a lot of really really good work on on the mothman's or the the mothman or, or the the dark winged humanoid right whatever it is in 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 chicago I've, I've read quite a few of those and and the um it's really really compelling the 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 people that he's he, he's gotten the information from but but the mothman type figure has been seen other places than than in in chicago oh god or, yes yeah i mean um Whenever there was also a bridge collapse in in well in Minnesota in Minneapolis, yep. and and a Mothman figure was seen there. A Mothman yep. figure was supposedly seen around Chernobyl yep. as as well. So, I mean, there are entities on on my in in my um, research on on the uh, uh, shadow people phenomena. Um, the uh, there are a, a number of different cultures around the planet who have this in their belief system that the 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 shadow people are harbingers of doom harbingers of death and with you know with 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 the you know the mothman type entity who's also a dark humanoid figure he seems to be a harbinger of doom as well so i mean i think a lot of this is is connected
I didn't cut out. No, I <laughs> no, see we're, we're we're here. Okay. What <laughs> what uh Jason? What would you do if you uh, had an unlimited budget? As far as where would you put that money? As far as cryptid research. Oh my gosh! An unlimited. Oh well. You know I mean, like, what do you think would give you the biggest bang? You know what? Box? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, but then I'm gonna backstep from it. Uh, you know, I said the you know one of the first ones that the the first cryptids that, that caught my heart was uh, was was Bigfoot, but actually the very first one that caught my heart was the Loch Ness monster. Uh, mm. I, I wouldn't put it into that though. Um, I, I definitely I think I would put it into Bigfoot research, and and I wouldn't go in the Pacific Northwest. There are a lot of other Bigfoot hotspots that that I would jump in just to see because I think that that one is what we're going to find. I mean, there are other ones like, like the thylacine, you know, in, in uh, Australia, I think have a better chance, but it's a creature that we know about. And uh, I think it very well from sightings that they've had could still be around, but, but I think I would really, really hunt down a Bigfoot. You'd like to hunt down a Bigfoot. <laughs> Not hunt as in kill a big foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with, with a cam, with a camera, right? With 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 a camera, or you know, capture and release. Of course, once we capture it, it might cuss us out because I think they're really, really intelligent. Yeah, uh, I, I I've been, I've had squatches walking around my tent at night, and there will be no capturing if they don't want to be captured. <laughs> extraordinarily big and extraordinarily strong and some of the things that doug and i were talking about yesterday with regard to some of the things that happened up at snell lake where they lifted the the cabin off of its foundation uh, while they were in it and and just the sheer power that they ultimately have uh i i've had reports where they picked up full-grown elk that have, this was in montana where there was a guy that was trying to put an elk that had been killed in and all of a sudden the, the squatch walked up, picked it up and just walked off with it. And it was just a full grown elk that they were just like, like nothing. So, right. so, you know, if, if, if it's the not, if they don't want to be captured, that's one of the things is, is the, is the strength because, because I've, 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 I've heard and, and talked to people about, about the immense strength these things have, but I think the thing that if if they don't want to be captured, they won't be is is their speed, because that's one of the things that is more you know that 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 is with every Sasquatch encounter is that these things can be here and gone in in just a snap of a finger. They're just so fast. I've had uh, reports that they've been able to keep up with cars going 30, 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, watching you know as as the car is going the the report is you know the, the squatch is keeping up with them running side by side and so that that's pretty impressive you know what we need to do is get uh, the people involved with the nfl uh to believe in sasquatch they'll go out and find one <laughs> yeah. and recruit him <laughs> try, yeah. to, try to bring him in <laughs> for uh for a middle linebacker right. exactly <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, Jason, you were you were saying earlier that you know maybe some of these cryptids they're they're all kind of pointing to the same thing. If I am, am interpreting that right, like you know your book you cover like 250 cryptids. How many cryptids do you think there really is? Like, are is there like 12 different names for you know what I mean? Like a little gnome type creature. Well. <sighs> When when it when it comes when it comes to uh, like the gnomes, yes, uh, I I think that the because I mean, the descriptions and the behaviors of I went through a number of them: tom tars, uh, gnomes, kobolds, trolls, elves. They all fit the same pattern. They 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 all do the same thing. They all look the same. And and when you come over here to the United States to North America, you've got you have the Puckwudgie over in uh, in New England, and and they're the same type of of entity, and they behave the same way. So when when it comes to them, I think absolutely they're um, 
they're very similar. If they're not the same, they're cousins. Uh, when it comes to Bigfoot, I'm, I'm not sure. Because as I said before, there are so many, so many reports of them looking like, um, you know, eight foot tall gorillas. And then there are also this equal amount of reports of them looking like eight foot tall, hairy humans. They have human faces. Uh, the uh, um, skunk ape down in, in Florida looks more like an ape than, than any of the other type of, of Bigfoot that are reported. Some look like chimpanzees. They're, they're the wood devils from New Hampshire, which look like Bigfoot, except for they're really thin and, and their color is gray. So, um, you know, there, I think with Bigfoot, there are a lot of different types that, that so you think there the are subtypes. Base. I think there are subtypes. Yes, exactly. Well, you mean, you mean like people, I mean, people are so different. Oh my gosh! Yes, you know you put uh, you put a bunch of different people in a room and and bring in an alien and they're like, you know, they think we're all different. Yeah, hell, the four <laughs> of us too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you do you kind of buy into that too, Todd? That there's different like either types or subspecies, or do you think they're all the same? Well, that. I don't know if I've come to an opinion on that. I, I do agree that the, the descriptions that we've got are, are varied throughout the different regions um, as to whether that, you know, we all look different in, in, you know, I look like an old bald man. And, you know, so is that just the, the fact that we're, we're just seeing, you know, different, different uh, features that, you know, people are describing differently don't know um but yeah there, there's definitely uh, a, a variety of different descriptions that we get with regard to different locations as well and so uh, I, I until we do you know until we get that type of analysis that is you know finalized then we can make those sub species determinations I don't know. Uh, I, I'm I'm so fascinated by just the fact that they're out there. And, and you talked earlier about things like dog band, and, and I haven't looked into anything outside of Sasquatches because I, I just haven't had a chance to dive in. And things like dog band scare me to death, and so I don't have any desire to reach research anything like that because uh, the that would you know if i saw something like that in the woods i i, I don't know what i would do um well, here's I, I what's hope, it, to no. never, hope to never <laughs> see anything like that uh i'll go after yeah. sasquatches I, I i've i've worked up enough courage to do that and i don't know if i'd be able to do anything else all right todd i i agree with you on that because i have no problem with a sasquatch being a primate when it comes to a dog man that scares me to death <laughs> yeah i uh, I, I just th that that concept from, you know, when I was talking earlier about the gigantic gigantic, uh, which is a, a real primate in, in so forth. But then you think about from an evolutionary standpoint, there's, there's a rationale for, you know, something along those lines from a, a evolutionary standpoint. If you're looking at it from a dog man perspective, there isn't any particular reason why a dog would go on two legs. Or, or any type of canid would would end up on two legs from a there, there's no advantages from that aspect um and so w when you're looking at it from that perspective it, it it doesn't seem and one of the other things with regard to dogmen is that we don't have any 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 pictures that i've ever seen that are anywhere credible that would substantiate it. Now we've got lots of pictures of squatches uh, uh, over the years. Some of them are good. Some of them are better than others, but from a dog man perspective and from like a moth man and those types of things, I, I just haven't seen anything with regard to that. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my, my focus on the Sasquatches and I, and I just don't have an opinion on anything else. Well, Todd um, um, and Jason to make um, a point, let's say you had a juvenile that's skinny, but that just happened to be a little more rambunctious and willing to show itself more. Mm -hmm. 
So then you could get this false idea. There's a new species of skinny. Yeah, right. Do you follow? This, that's the problem because, you know, all little Bigfoots eventually become big, big, big. Yeah. And so you just, you don't know if you're, you know, talking about a female that's just seen more or a big male or one that's brown. And, and so you can get false information just based on all the body body types that they would probably naturally have. So certainly I would imagine Bergman's law probably applies where Southern ones where it's warmer, if they stay South would be a little bit smaller and Northern ones would be bigger, you know, for body mass reasons. So I don't know. That's, it's an interesting topic though. And none of us know that's the, that's a great yeah. Right, and that's the thing with I've I've spoken in a lot of a lot of paranormal uh, conventions, and there are so many people saying I know that aliens are X, Y, and Z. I know that Bigfoot is X, Y, and Z, and we don't know if if, if, if out there, folks, if somebody says they know exactly what something in the paranormal is, they they don't. Yeah, yeah, I would have to say I probably know less now than I did. 30 years ago um just don't know what they are don't know what they don't know what they do i keep looking for answers I'm not gonna not gonna give up there but i'm no closer to to good to knowing anything you know and i think that's kind of a natural thing that's gonna happen if you're really doing real research and you're listening and you're open-minded and you know so who knows who knows? I guess there's no real reason to come to those conclusions at this point. But not, I really not hope. Yet. Right. Yeah, I really and, and hope. Just keep an open mind. Yeah. yeah. Do you think this mystery ever will be solved, Jason? Do you think a body would even solve the mystery? You know, when it comes to any sort of cryptid, if there's a body, I think it would. Um, I don't like all of the stories about you know, the government swooped in at Mount St. Helens and carted off all these Bigfoot carcasses. Uh, you know, I, there are so many stories like that out there. And why would the government care if we knew Bigfoot exists? That that bothers me because uh, I don't think they would. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if there was a Bigfoot carcass or, or again, we, we captured one if we were that lucky. Um. I, I really think that that it would end it would end that. I mean, my gosh, we discover science discovers uh, an average of eighteen thousand new species a year. Uh, you know, admittedly, most of them are insects. Uh, there are a lot of birds that we discover. Sure. But every once in a while, uh, back about fifteen years ago, there was a new species of orangutan that was discovered. But, but, but here's something more powerful than that. We have 1.8 million, they estimate, to discover yet. 1.8 million species that we don't even know about. That right. Earth. I imagine a lot of them are in the, in the sea. Sure. Probably, the sea, we don't know anything about insects. the sea, honestly. Sure. But there are still large animals being discovered. Yeah. And this has to do with the sea, the megamouth shark, which is 18 feet long. Uh, was just dis was discovered in 1977 that wasn't all that long ago and that's a huge animal i mean yeah, there there to be other animals out there and if bigfoot is as smart as, as i think and a lot of people think uh they can effectively hide from us so there no wonder we haven't found one yet I, I just wonder if science would even accept a, you know one body they're gonna go well we're gonna need two you know, it, it's a it's a body. <laughs> I think they would accept one body. We'll see. We will see. Yeah. Which time do we have? No, oh, oh, we're we're still good. Um. But what what are your thoughts on Mothman? Do you think they're real? Or in other words, you had a bet. If you were a betting man, you had to lay a hundred dollar bill, real or completely misidentified, made up. Nothing to it. What would you bet on for a Mothman? All right. So it's at least a six to seven foot tall human shaped figure with no neck, 
a large head, big glowing eyes, and wings, and it can fly at least 60 miles an hour. All right? It is not a heron. It is not an extraordinarily large owl. Yeah. Yeah. I don't okay. think people are misidentifying. No, I don't think it's misidentified. There was a, there've been a lot of I mean there I think there have been way too many um way too many sightings, way way too many encounters for it not to be real. But what is it? You know, Mothman to me seems less of a cryptid and more of something supernatural. Yeah, I mean it's um uh, I like to tell this story only because it might we might give you some more info. Me and Yvette were driving down 35W in Minnesota through um, past Cloquet, Minnesota, down by Moose Lake, and we see something in the moonlight just drop straight down, right down to highway level from the sky. And then it headed right for my windshield. And Yvette finally ducked, and we both got a look at it. It looked like a winged human. Went right over the top of my car, missed my, you know, windshield by inches. I eventually ducked. I know damn well it wasn't an owl. Don't know what it was. It kind of, you know, got a decent look at it. But it had a huge effect on us. And certainly humbled me because at that point, I was certainly not going to be going, oh, that's BS. And that's, you know what I mean? I just... I can't judge that anymore. But the way it dropped down from the sky with its wings open, it defied physics. Well, I think maybe the 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 big thing that that would be the convincer for me is you said it looked like a winged human. Yeah. If you take any sort of bird, the 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 lower part of the body is not going to look like a human. Right. It it is it's way too small and the legs aren't long or thick enough. So yeah, that sounds like a definite. Well, this head had like a human like head. It was shiny. You know, the whole thing was kind of shiny looking. Um, I remember seeing its eyes. They were just black. They weren't glowing. Now, but there that, were encounters like that with uh with uh with a, a, a cryptid in, in Texas. It sounded like a lot like that. It was uh, shaped like a human, it had large bat wings. Yeah, that's and, and it like, had a yeah. human-like face. But it's so scary telling that story because that doesn't make any sense. But me and Yvette both saw it. We were together. We both saw it. We weren't thinking about anything. We're just driving home, coming back from up north. It was a beautiful evening. We had the radio on. We weren't talking monsters. It just totally caught us off guard. And I can't deny of what we saw. I don't know what it was, but I can just say kind of what it looked like. I know it scared the crap out of both of us. We did get to see how big it was. It certainly was getting close to the width of the freeway. You know, that's it's kind of weird. But I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's tra traditionally, at least police-wise, um, eyewitness accounts aren't reliable. No. Um, but you know what? Two of you saw yeah. the same thing yeah um i i was in in uh in an unfinished basement with three other guys we were playing cards and from one side of the basement uh a woman's voice said victor there was nobody else in the house upstairs was locked we were downstairs by ourselves. Mm. there was nothing down there because he just moved in his name was victor we finished playing that one hand and we all looked at each other and we said, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. <laughs> so we all left and left Victor there at home alone. But the point is, the more witnesses, the more real it is. So that Yeah, is it's, it's pretty account. hard to just say, well, you both imagined it. Well, you know, we were not trying to see this thing. We did not want to see it. In fact, it's had a really bad effect on her. Um, I'll say, do you want to go up north? You want to? She's like, no. We have to. We, you know, we got to drive through the woods. She's very afraid of the woods at this point. Um, I get it, and you know, I get it too. And, and of course, you think, what if I wasn't in my car? Mm -hmm. 
and that thing swooped that close, mm -hmm. would it have grabbed us? What was its purpose? Was it trying to scare us? Why did it swoop so close to the windshield? Why did there, it there are a lot of birds that do that. Well, this dropped down from literally moon level from our perspective down to the freeway and then straight at us. So you know, you mentioned straight. something earlier about a about a teenage Bigfoot. What if this is a teenage Mothman? Hey, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna go mess with these people. Yeah, that could be. I don't it know. Could be. But what's so, interesting? So Doug, did you see the like wings flapping, or was it never was flapped? It, nope, just, never flapped. And that's a common thing. I didn't know that. It just dropped down with its wings open, kept its wings open, and swooped at our car. Never flapped its wings, Todd. Okay. But you got to realize when it dropped, its wings were open. You cannot drop straight down with your wings open. No, no. That's, uh, you, you flies, watch those birds that dive in for fish, you know, into the ocean and they, they, they go in stoop. like torpedoes. Yeah, they yeah. have to stoop their wings in. Yeah. And this did not do that. It just left them wide open, dropped like a spider on a web, and then mm. headed right for my car and did a 90 degree angle didn't make any sense so i would have to put that definitely in the paranormal category you know thing was not a living or not a flesh and blood normal creature you know i don't think this thing was diving and catching fish in the lake if you know what i mean <laughs> a little more alien like but you know i've talked to i've probably talked to 20 witnesses no not one of them said no the wings never moved even lon strickler had a sighting he said the thing just shot straight up from a standing position. You know, it was in a creek bed, but yet it still just shot straight up, no wing flapping. And you know, there stories, have been there have been you know Mothman sightings that I that I've read that have been just like that. Yeah, that's weird. But those are stories that I don't like to tell. But yeah, I have a witness at least. It helps. I wish I would have had a dash cam. <laughs> you know, that one I now? Haven't, I haven't, no, I haven't learned my lesson. I keep buying them and they keep failing and breaking. And yeah, know, I, 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 the, the reviews, I haven't junk. bought one either, but the reviews I've read are, are pretty, pretty bad. They're junk. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're they all made from like basically the same company in yeah. China and yeah. they just package them under different names for the yeah. most part. And so they're yeah. all pretty bad. Or you could just be like me, and I uh, hit a deer a few years ago, and I don't like to drive at night at all. So I just see things that happen during the daylight. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you, I think about that stuff. You know, I go, I always tell people, I just take the garbage out at night. I'm thinking about that sighting. And you, you, can you blame me? thing was huge. I mean, it certainly was big enough to grab me and just – Pull me away. So I don't know. I don't know what category to put those in, but these creatures um, are fueled constantly by other people. You know, they're not going away. Are you working on um, volume two right now, Jason? Yep, sure am. Uh, of course. It's, it's, it's a, uh, chasing North American monsters, and I'm going to okay. do a few from the United States, but I'm going to. I'm going to really hit Canada hard and Mexico and uh, the countries, uh, countries on down south to Panama. Uh, one of the two of the things that I'm going to explore in the book specifically are three toed Bigfoots. Because there have been three toed That's, Bigfoot yep. uh, reportings from Louisiana all the way up to Minnesota. And it looks like they're following the Mississippi River. So. I'm going to explore that. I'm also uh, exploring the, um, the the Jefferson ground sloth. Uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, also, uh, you know, he was a he was a scientist as as, as well as uh, you know everything else that that man was, um, and he discovered the giant ground sloth in North America, uh, and and he categorized it and. There Are you been... talking about the Pleistocene? Yes, yes, I am. Creature fossils, and and that has been uh, that's part of the 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 legends of from Canada all the way down to South America. 
So there have been sightings and, 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 and encounters of this creature that's been dead for 10,000 years. Yeah. Do so, you think they're ghosts or do you think maybe they're ghosts of animals past? You know, why aren't there ghosts? Why don't we see uh, T-Rexes, you know, thundering, you know, down Main Street of Middle America? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yeah, the only do. the only the only uh, ghost animals we tend to see are are our uh, pets. Alex, if you were if, okay, if you were you and Elsa were driving down a road and saw a T Rex running down the middle of the road, would you tell anybody, even though you had a witness? I wouldn't tell you guys. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't even tell me, probably. No, <laughs> no, Alex, you wouldn't because <laughs> your first reaction would be to pee. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that part. That would be mine. That was, yeah. <laughs> so, Todd, if you saw a Mothman, <laughs> you and your wife driving home from up north, just whatever, and you guys saw one, would you have the courage to tell tell the world? I would, um, because I don't care what people think, uh, and yeah. if that's not obvious by now. Um, I, I I wouldn't have any apprehensions in saying those types of things, but I'd also look deep into my own recesses of my brain. It's like, boy, did I really see that, or did or did, am I am I hallucinating or something along those lines? No, I said you saw it with your wife. Right, right. No, I I, I would I would um, in, I introspectively I would look at that, and then I'd I'd talk to her as well. And no, I wouldn't have any apprehensions about. about I didn't have to talk to Yvette. She was screaming. Right. <laughs> there was no talking. She was screaming for me to pull over at a gas station because she was worried that something was clinging or this thing had grabbed onto our car. It just was sitting on the top. And... It was, she was just picturing her brain. Yeah. So No, I, I wouldn't have any issue with, with uh, especially okay. in doing those types of things. But I'm I'm not your normal person that, that, that would, because I, I, I really couldn't. Doesn't bother me to 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 talk about these types of things. How about you, Jason? Would you tell the world? You know, I agree with Todd. Right now, you know, I've gotten to the certain age to where I don't care what other people think. I'll just tell tell you what what happened. You know, if if I were to encounter a Bigfoot, I I would tell people. Mm. Um, I when I I've told plenty of people when I when I was a child, I saw a full bodied apparition in my house. Okay, and and that has stuck with me, and and I'm not a not ashamed to talk. So about you've it seen some all. weird. So you have seen some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, Greg Greg Olson says, J C Johnson. By the way, just so you know, Todd used to go up by you know Randy's, J C Johnson. He's a researcher. Mm -hmm. I think he's from like Oklahoma or whatever, but he said he saw, he had numerous dinosaur sightings in the Four Corners area. Oh, well, there have been a lot of dinosaur encounters, uh, you know, specifically uh, um, raptor, velociraptor or T-Rex type encounters in, in Colorado and in Texas. All right, and I got to go. In, Goodbye. In Western Oklahoma. <laughs> Um, there have been quite a few uh, um, pterodactyl sightings in um, in in you know Mexico and yeah, and there was yeah. one famous one in 1977. Pterosaurs in, too in Texas. Yeah, they were um, um, there were four science teachers. They were they were gone on a uh, you know they they went to a teachers conference and as they were driving through West Texas, all four of these science teachers saw. A pterodactyl, and you'd think they would know what a pterodactyl. Yeah, you would like. think if they're science teachers. Yeah, right. I mean, and that science teachers, you know, they don't get paid enough for cocaine, so they knew exactly what they were looking at. By the way, Alex, there was your short for YouTube. What he just said. <laughs> Four science teachers were in Colorado on so That's a great, great soundbite, Jason. Yeah, you would think. You would think. Um, you just wonder, you know, if it's metaphysical, if they're really here, they're just ghosts or patterns, or it's just somebody up there pulling strings going, here, watch this. This is going to be funny. I'm going to play a joke on this dude. You know, you wonder if there's some dude up there, you know, just putting on a holographic show for us at times. Sounds like a Twilight Zone episode. It does. Yeah. It does, or what if it's just a ball of bad video game? 
<laughs> it's just a glitch in the video game. You you just wonder, you know. Um, I don't know what to think. I have no idea. So, what is the um the weirdest creature that you think might you know the witness might have told the truth, or how it got reported was true in your book? What's the weirdest thing? Well, and, and I one. got this. Just pick I one. Got the, I am. I am. And I've gotten, I, I have a couple of, a uh, couple of cases of this same creature. Um, uh, one of the, the, the first one I'm going to mention was uh, a man was, was surf fishing in, in California. And he saw, well, after he came back from surf fishing, he was uh, out in, behind his house and on, at, at a table. And he was, he was, taking care of the fish he was cutting up the fish and um he saw in the air a transparent it looked like a flying carpet but it was it was transparent and it flew over him and then he watched it coming at him and it flew over him and he watched it fly away i talked with somebody from from chicago uh, she and her husband saw the same thing driving home one night and it was this uh not transparent but translucent uh carpet looking being i i think the most interesting and this is a historic translucent account. okay just back up translucent carpet looking thing yes like a flying carpet oh nice right yeah oh, by I the did. way flat rock you're right and and Ristol, i i um actually skipped the garbage the other I know, a couple of weeks ago once because I was I just not dealing with it. <laughs> Anyhow, go ahead. So this flat carpet thing that that it was undulating as it as it moved across nice. the sky. Uh, there was another one in I think it was I think it was Nevada, and um, there it was a historic one and 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 uh, and it was like in the 1930s and and a person who was flying a plane landed on top of. Uh, I don't know. It was a, a butte. I don't know. Buttes are big enough, wide enough for a plane to land. But it was, you know, something like that. And they they saw one, and it seemed to be injured. And another one came along, and and picked up the the injured one and and flew off. But these are okay. three different from three different three different encounters of the same thing from different times. I mean, would it be parts more of the country? Wouldn't it be more plausible that these are all these weird ones or alien creatures that are just visiting actual aliens from another planet? Well, it, it could be, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, a better explanation, I think. Well, the point is we don't have good explanations. We can say what God our does. human minds think. Well, oh, let, hell let's, no. <laughs> let, let, let's 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 look at this. I want to look at this from an extra extraterrestrial uh uh, a viewpoint, not not that I'm being an extraterrestrial, but this, okay, a lot of scientists annoy me when they say this. The nearest star that could have a habitable planet is so far away, the aliens couldn't reach us from there. And, and my argument is with our science. Yeah, exactly. They couldn't reach here from there. Exactly. With their science, they probably exactly. could. So with our science right now, we can't determine what. Well, it took down. three months to go from New York to Oregon too, back in the 1800s. Exactly, exactly. You know. Well, look at look at from 1903 to 1968. We went from the first human flight to going on landing on the moon. So we don't know what's going on because I don't think our science for a lot of this is is ready for it yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that's such a such a poor argument you know to say well we're not being visited because they couldn't get here like well, really like you've been there you know their technology mm -hmm. exactly exactly <laughs> you, know? you know so that's that's why i just think those kind of answers are just without any merit without but i just think that's the most plausible answer to these really weird wacky including the thing i saw me and Yvette saw it's just got to be some alien creature that those wings are not even wings or it's a jetpack. It's a, some kind of anti-gravity deal. Who knows? You know, for all you know, it's just an Edgar suit. You know, they peel that Mothman Edgar suit off and yeah. inside's a little thing called plankton. 
a little dude that big. You know, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It could be. You no, know, it could be that plankton yeah. is controlling the world. I wouldn't. Be that surprised. could be. I know plankton's in my microphone for yeah. sure. He's driving my. I literally, by the way, when I disappeared, I got a message. It said somebody has unplugged your microphone, and then oh it went, whoosh, and I couldn't hear any. It literally said somebody has unplugged your microphone. I'm like, what? I'm looking around. There's nobody in my studio. And then it went to sound, and I, I rebooted, and it came back. You know, I'm going to one-up you on uh, computer talking to you. Uh, this has been about five or six years ago. I turned Siri on uh, on, on my Mac computer just because yeah. I wanted to ask a question for the very first time. And Siri gave me the wrong answer, and I said a bad word, Siri. <laughs> And Siri responded with, I would never talk to you like that, Jason. Whoa. Like, whoa, okay, yeah, this is, yeah. Oh, so I'm not man. really worried about extraterrestrials. I'm not worried about Bigfoot. I'm worried about AI. I'm I've not worried about translucent <laughs> carpet things that undulate. <laughs> That's my new fear unlocked. Alex, <laughs> wouldn't you worry about these undulating clear carpet oh, things? Yeah. The, it's creepy. Ugh. I probably have suction cups on them. They just get you like that. I don't know. We live, you know what's so cool though, Jason and Todd and Alex, we live in an amazing world that's full of mysteries. And it's just, it's amazing that nobody's interested in all this stuff because yeah. they're fueled. You know, this is a fueled, constant fueled thing. And, and like I said, maybe it's all just a joke. Maybe it's just entertainment for us. You know, well, could be. I, I think there, there, these are solid questions that that we're ask, asking. I think the reason most people don't uh, ask these questions or, or are not interested, a lot of people aren't interested, is because they're you know more worried about the uh, uh, the Rick and Morty season seven that's starting, and they're more worried about their football team. Yeah, you know how 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 they're doing. Um, you know, those are things that are easy to watch, but. These things are, I mean, they take a lot of things, you know, a lot of brain power to think about. You, you, you have to open yourself up to, to topics that might not be comfortable. You, to you. you want to hear a crazy story? I'm telling you, maybe David's and David, I was on the phone with David Ellis. And we were just talking about ghosts and poltergeist activity. And I literally said to him, I'm not afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> and within seconds after I said that, there's a huge bang <laughs> inside the house. And then another bang, it's a little less of a bang. And I walk in and there's a cooler thrown into the middle of the floor in my entranceway. And in the kitchen, there's a there's a, a bag of bagels in the middle of the, the wood floor in the kitchen. And I'm like, ooh, I better not say that anymore. <laughs> and Dad was on the phone with David during the whole time. I mean, it was spooky. So. Yeah, you got. I mean, you got to watch what 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 you say. I, I yeah. interviewed a, a man in South Missouri once. He was uh, getting ready for deer season. He had a, had a, he was uh, down the, his back forty, and and he had a little little trailer, uh, little camper trailer there. He was going to stay in, and and he was drinking a beer, sitting there at the at the fire, and he said, "I think somebody's here with me. Why don't you come join me?" And he was terrorized the entire night by something he couldn't see. So, yeah, watch what you say. Folks. I better not say that any. I did yeah. say that. David just said, yeah, this is true, because I did say that to him. I'm not afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> and it was just seconds after this all went down. Could be a coincidence. Everything could have just tipped over. and But in two different rooms at the same time, I don't know. It was kind of bizarre. Um, Todd, have you ever had any ghost activities like that or anything? Yeah, in a condo that I lived in when we were in uh, La Costa in California, okay. had some activity where I'd heard some things, um, my name being called, and uh, my wife had had some uh visuals and one of the one of my friends was spending the night in in the spare bedroom and he saw it the same thing that my wife saw this uh app, you know apparition um so yeah i've had a couple of things that i i can't explain much much like that 
it's you know, humbling. Bagels, bagels throughout the house, right? It's humbling, isn't it? It, it is. Um, I, I've talked to my friends about it as well, and they've also, you know, shared some of their things that they've they've heard and, and saw over the years, and so it's it's like a head scratcher. Okay, now Alex, your turn. Your mic is muted, but something must have happened to you at some point in your life with a ghost or something really weird that just like what? Are a you ghost? an Ilse? Huh? Nothing. No, oh, cut it's, it out. I'm so boring. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Nothing's ever happened. Well, I might well, have let's, seen let's the go scratching, Rack. Alex. Uh, we'll what I want you watching. to do is. I want you to say, I'm not afraid of no ghosts about <laughs> six times tonight before you go to bed. I like while I looking in the ghost, mirror. Like yeah, while looking in the mirror. Exactly. <laughs> that's just asking for it. You've not really, Alex, had anything ever happen, have you? No, I'm like an anti magnet for you're, this. You're, you're clean. He's clean as a whistle, guys. The only thing is weird is once I mean, I think you saw a floating donut. Yeah. Yeah, that did happen. That did happen once. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, we're going to wind it up, guys. Thank you for coming on, Jason. It's a ton of fun. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Thanks for having your technical problems because you made me not look so bad. (laughs) (laughs) It it only took a phone to figure it out. Three weeks in a row. Three weeks in a row, and we're just getting rid of all sorts of things. We're trying to look for this gremlin. I've got a gremlin in my studio. So we'll we'll figure it out. But thanks a lot, Jason. Um, Alex, do you want to put up a link for his book, quick? Yeah, yeah. Let's show sure. this book again. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on my website. You can get it on Llewellyn. What, what what's the name of your website, Jason? It's just my name, JasonOffit dot com. Oh, okay. Is that German? Your name? No, it's uh, Welsh. Welsh. Okay. So there it is. There it is. And he's got, um, it's a big book. Yeah. That's a lot of book for the money you're charging. Hey, on. you know, when you look at this here, 681 ratings at 4.7 out of 5 stars. That's pretty, pretty damn good. That's a, that's a pretty damn good book. That's actually a huge <laughs> amount of ratings. It's huge. Yes, that's So massive. good job. I would almost put that in a bestsellers list. Well, it's it's been pretty high on the, uh, on the, on the uh, seller's chart for, uh, uh, for Amazon since it came out. Well, I'm going to buy one and I'm going to, I'm going to give it a review and there's going to be one more on there. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Look forward to it. Yeah. Um, I'm really sad we got to go, but we think we got to wind it up. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. Thanks everybody in chat. Um, thanks for all the cool comments that everybody made. We really appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. Um, also wanted to mention, I'm saddened by the passing of Joe Schneider, who passed away last night. Um, so, um, you know, my condolences go out to his friends and family. So this show, I'm just, de- I'm going to dedicate to you, Joe. Thanks. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. I call you up in the middle of the night. Been bothered by dreams, ain't feeling all right. You give me comfort, say just give it some time By the end of our talk, I'm feeling just fine You and I will always know where we belong This ain't no ordinary love we got going on I'll pick you up in my 59 Ford We head on down the road until we Should be in